Hello and welcome to another edition of our Planet in Focus Decision Maker Profile Series. In this video, I'm speaking with Justine Pimlot, who is a producer with the NFB's Ontario studio. Justine, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to be here. It's great to have you. Um, to begin, maybe I can ask you to briefly introduce uh, the NFB and how it might differ from some of the other um, funders that uh, our viewers may be familiar with in that you are a public producer. So can you tell me a little bit about what that <clears throat> means for uh, how you develop and support documentary projects? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a, um, our, a pub, Canada's public producer, uh, it really um, our goal is that, you know, our mandate is to produce and distribute creative, socially and culturally um, you know, resonant audiovisual works that provide new perspectives on Canada and the world uh, from the uh, Canadian points of view. Um, and our, we also, you know, to, to, to offer a special insight into the diversity and vitality of our, of our culture and that are an essential part of our, our national cultural heritage. Um, you know, we pride ourselves on an opportunity to bring a work to the NFB that you may not have a chance to, to create um, in the traditional you know, broadcast models and uh, those kind of traditional funding models, something that you know, um, you know, takes more time, isn't driven by a broadcast schedule, um, and an opportunity to experiment and push form. Um, these are really key aspects of the NFB's mandate. So actually what you're saying just then is, is um, a great precursor to my next question, which is, um, you know, what makes a project the right fit for you? What kinds of projects do you, do you look to support? Yeah, uh, so uh, we, we uh, support uh, documentaries, uh, features, and uh, shorts. Uh, in our studio, uh, our, our, our producer, David Oppenheim, um, you know, works uh, uh, producing, uh, you know, VR um, uh, and uh, digital projects. Um, the other co-producer, the other producer rather in our studio is Leah Marin and uh, she and I, 80% uh, of our, our, uh, our slate is more linear documentary. Um, you know, we do uh, a little bit of animation, not a lot. Mostly it's the NFB uh, animation studio that produces the majority of that kind of work. Um, so, you know, we're looking for uh, works that really resonate in terms of, you know, the power of storytelling, um, you know, character driven POV documentaries that have a very strong POV um, and push form. You know, we're always looking for work that pushes the form in, 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 in innovative ways. Um, an example of some of the more recent work that we've released from the studio is um, my project, Inconvenient Indian, that, pr that premiered at TIFF um, and then went on to play at Imaginative and uh, is uh, now going to do RIDM. So that's an example um, of a really powerful work that is exploring really important social issue that resonates right now very powerfully with uh, what we're, um, uh, you know, looking at in terms of the conversations that we're having in Canada uh, around Indigenous sovereignty and Indigenous rights. But, you know, the director, Michelle Latimer, just as just a good example, really pushed and played with form in terms of telling that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another project from our studio uh, is uh, Unarmed Verses, uh, produced by Leah Marin. Um, very strong POV film directed by Charles Officer. Uh, a Better Man, directed by Atia Khan, co-directed with Larry Jackman, um, that explored intimate partner violence. Um, you know, the, I always encourage people to go to our site and really try to look at the kind of work that we've, we've been producing recently. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I really encourage people, you know, to do that before you pitch us, just to see the kind of work that we've been prioritizing, the kind of work that's been coming out of our studio and, and that's been coming out of the NFB across the country. Mm -hmm. So on the subject of pitches, if you are a filmmaker that's interested in exploring, you know, that sort of concept, um, how, how does one pitch to the NFB? I understand that you both, uh, you know, you, you produce original productions uh, as well as uh, you co-produce projects that per perhaps are already sort of in the works. So 
how, how do these, how can a filmmaker uh, initiate a relationship like that with you? Right, so, I mean, you know, pre-COVID, um, but now we're doing this sort of thing. Um, you know, we really, the producer are really present and really engage with the documentary community, not only in our studio, but across the country, you know, to doing uh, pitch sessions like, you know, like at Planet in Focus um, and other key festivals. Um, and so that's an opportunity where we can meet the filmmakers and establish, start to build and establish relationships with, with filmmakers in the community. Um, and um, so, you know, uh, we're often, we're, we're, we're at most, all, in fact, all of the documentary festivals. Um, <clears throat> so there, you know, we're often doing one-on-one -on -one pitches with people in the community. Um, and then we have a submissions process uh, whereby you, we, we take submissions regularly Mm -hmm. And if that if you go to the NFB website, um, you know, which is uh, producing with the NFB, um, you can, you know, submit your work and we have regular programming meetings where we're looking at the work that's been submitted and uh, making those decisions as producers in terms of the kind of projects that have been submitted and what we were interested, what we're interested to potentially move forward on. And, yeah. and so, so there's, there's different models in terms of the way that you can work with us. So um, <clears throat> we have what's called a 100% NFB project, which is funded 100% by the NFB. Mm -hmm. So that's where the filmmaker uh, would pitch the project uh, either through the submissions process or directly to a producer. Um, and that project is produced by us. So for example, if that was a project that that had come to me and that, um, that uh, we move forward on, I would be the producer on that project and it would be completely funded by the NFB. The other model that we have is a co-production and that is working with uh, independent co-producer and we uh, come on board as a co-producer on that project. You know, and that's a way that we really do work differently. You know, we don't, we're not a funder in the same way that, for example, the CMF, you know, or Telefilm is, mm -hmm. you know, we really are a co-producer and we like to get on board the project from the development phase mm -hmm. early on so that we can actually start to, you know, build the film together, you know, make decisions together and really work in a collaborative way with, you know, the director and the co-producer. So, so that's a really important part of the way that, that, that we like to work. Um, and then the third uh, way that you can work with the NFB is an international co-production uh, mm -hmm. where there's, again, a, a Canadian uh, co-producer and then an international co-producer and the NFB also on board as a co-producer. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at a, at a pitch meeting, um, mm -hmm. what do you like to see in terms of uh, a trailer or uh, footage and, and when you are maybe looking at written materials, what do you like to see on paper? I really would let, I mean, the filmmaker's vision is really important, you know, the story and the filmmaker POV. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you're pitching to, to me, uh, I really like to get a sense of, you know, A, the power of the story that you're telling, you know, um, why you want to tell that story, you know, have a sense of, you know, who the subjects are, what the, what the story is, and the visual, uh, approach of the filmmaker in telling that story. I think these are really key things, you know, uh, the, is the creative. And the other aspect is, you know, in terms of our mandate, um, you know, we have, we have numerous projects, obviously, that we're in different stages uh, with. So uh, we, you know, development uh, and production. And so, you know, sometimes somebody might come to us with a project that's very strong, but we have to look at our overall slate and see, you know, are there other projects that are tackling the same subject matter, even though they might be tackling them in a different way. We are, we're often really looking also at our overall slate in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, making those decisions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, really, uh, I, I want to see the creative. I want to see this. What is the story? What is the storytelling? What is the approach? Um, who's the team? Um, that's really key. Um, but, you know, if you're coming as a co-production uh, with a producer and the director uh, pitching, uh, you know, discussions around uh, all of those elements, you know, especially story first, um, and then, you know, we can talk about the viability of uh, funding and uh, the viability of, uh, 
you know, that moving forward. But, you know, number one conversation for me is about uh, storytelling, story ap approach, the director's vision. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in terms of format, is it just one-off feature documentaries or do you support shorter format work or, or any series uh, work? You know, we have done some um, seri online series uh, uh, out of um, other studios. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, uh, we support uh, feature docs and shorts. So both of those. Yeah. And is there a, a typical budget range that you work within? You know, they really vary. Uh, for example, the budgets should be based on the scope of the storytelling, the ambition, the ambition of the storytelling in the sense of, you know, a smaller a documentary that has a more local story you know, obviously might not have the same sort of uh, demands in terms of budget needs as something that is, has a lot of travel around the globe or is um, using different kinds of um, visual approaches. Let's say a project that's using animation or some other um, uh, form, you know, uh, so they really vary uh, in terms of, you know, and so the scope of the budget really is impacted by the scope of the story. Got it. Um, has anything, you know, for, for, for folks that have maybe um, heard from NFB representatives in the past, uh, our current moment is obviously a different context. So I'm wondering if, uh, if anything has, has changed in light of COVID, um, probably less so in terms of the content that you're looking for, but maybe, you know, in any ways that might impact um, what your what your sort of your slate of, of productions at the moment and, and sort of what resources might be available. Yeah, I mean, we're moving forward to green light productions. We haven't stopped doing that. Um, you know, uh, in terms of shooting, you know, we're we're like uh, other producers following the guidelines that have that have been created, and um, so we're making decisions on a case by case basis in terms of uh, the viability of filming at this time. You know, and, and assessing all of the potential risks and so on. So really that's the approach that we're taking is that we have a set of protocols and we're adhering to those protocols and making decisions case by case. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we're, we're, we're open for business. <laughs> you know, we haven't stopped in any way, shape or form, um, you know, receiving pitches or moving forward on projects, you know, production schedules may uh, be impacted, you know, at certain stages as the um, protocols and uh, you know, the government regulations around COVID and what the restrictions are change, but essentially, you know, we've been working. We haven't stopped. Good to hear. Um, you mentioned earlier that you recommend um, folks take a look at, uh, you know, your your uh, catalog to see what sorts of projects you typically produce. Um, you also talked about uh, you regularly attend, um, you know, documentary marketplaces, uh, pitching events. Um, how else? Uh, can producers get in touch uh, or filmmakers get in touch to see if their projects uh, might be a fit for you? You can reach directly out to any of us at any time. Um, you know, there, if you go to the NFB uh, website, there is a production site and it has information about all the different studios, who we are, how to reach us, uh, the kind of work that we're looking for. There, there's a lot of information there and it also has a list of what's in development what's in production and what's in release. And mm. if you, that's at, um, at uh, nfb.ca and it's uh, the pr production, how to, how to produce with the NFB. So there's a lot of information there. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and finally, um, I'm just, uh, I'm curious, you, you mentioned um, in Comedian Indian on our verses, I'm wondering, uh, are there any recent films that you've seen um, that, that, that are not NFB productions that have resonated with you for whatever reason? Are there productions that aren't NFB productions that I've just seen? The films you've seen, documentaries you've seen recently that have struck you, just to give folks a sense of what, what uh, you're watching lately and what has kind of captivated you. Oh boy, that's a really interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> I mean, of course, ob yeah, I mean, yes, definitely. There, there's a, a lot of work. I watch documentaries constantly uh, and um, there's a lot of work out there. Um, Recently, I mean, as an LGBTQ person, um, I was really struck by um, No Ordinary Man mm. uh, that played a tip mm -hmm. um, with a Billy Tipton 
a story and I thought it was a beautiful and powerful story that was uh, really innovative in the way that the story was told. Mm. You know, so that's a work that, that, that really springs to mind. Mm. I mean, but I also say, even though I'm a documentary producer, um, you know, at the NFB, I'm a cinephile. And so right. I love, I love cinema. So, um, mm. you know, I watch a, a range of work because, you know, in terms of documentary approach, there's different creative ways, you know, it's storytelling period. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I love hybrid docs. Um, you know, I love the different kinds of uh, genres of documentaries, music docs. These are, you know, some of the, I mean, I really love a wide range of work. Um, and I love cinema in general. So, uh, you know, I'm very passionate about cinema as a whole. Uh, so, but yeah, no, no Ordinary Man springs to mind. There were a lot of fantastic shorts also at mm. uh, TIFF this year, mm. um, you know, uh, that I recently saw. Um, uh, I mean, there's, 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 there's quite a few. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what? I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just only, I don't only watch NFB films. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I know that. And, and I think your, your, um, your answer, uh, you know, I, I think it, it does tie back nicely to what you were saying earlier about um, how your, uh, your and the NFB's films are interested in, in exploring form. And, and, and um, I think we are seeing increasingly cinematic approaches to uh, documentary storytelling these days. And it's great that they have a home um, at a place like the NFB, where, as you say, they're not maybe yeah. constrained by the, the, the broadcast uh, production schedule or having to be, you know, sort of oriented specifically towards current affairs or, you know. Um, no, exactly. Exactly. I think that there's an idea of what constitutes an NFB film from, you know, years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that's a really interesting point that you raise because, you know, we, we don't, we, you know, our, our priority is not a current affairs approach. It's not mm. a journalistic approach. It's really creative POV approach, you mm. know? So, um, <clears throat> so that's a really, a really good point that you've raised. And I think that there, you know, those of us that grew up with the NFB in the classroom, um, you know, there's this notion uh, and, and not even from just when we were in the classroom, but, you know, uh, the NFB mandate at certain t times, you know, did shift. So, you know, in terms of that kind of creative form and pushing creative form. So, you know, there's a notion of what constitutes an NFB film. And I, that's why I always encourage people to go to our site because, right. you know, sometimes I will be in a situation where I'm being pitched and the person who's pitching me hasn't seen an NFB mm -hmm. film in the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, I think it's really key to to really see our most recent work and 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 what the NFB's been doing and what the filmmakers who've been working with the NFB have been doing, you know, and in particular our studio because we are situated in in Toronto and we are situated within a particular community. Mm -hmm. So um, I think um, yeah, very key to to look at the work. Yeah, okay. there, there's a whole list, Julian, still that I have that I'm trying to work my way through. Like for example, there's a bunch of incredible docs that came out of um, the gate at Sundance last year that I'm really mm -hmm. trying to catch up on, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's interesting, you know, just, you know, from that perspective to see what are the ones that then end up on the Academy long list and then end up on the Academy, you know, the list when they're nominated. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, there's a whole bunch that I, that I track and then I try to see them all, you know, one that I recently saw that's, you know, been also getting a lot of buzz is, there's Kirsten Johnson's film about her father called Dick Johnson is oh, Dead. Yes, yeah. You know, really, you know. Um, Speaking you know, of formally I mean, inventive. Exactly, right? Where, you know, essentially she sets up these scenarios where her father is killed. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give too much away because it is on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for example, and then the film Time, um, you know, there's a lot of extraordinary work. Uh, Eric Bradley's Time. Yeah, exactly. South of the border, um, but also in Canada. I mean, there's, there's, you know, we have such a huge pool of incredible talent. So um, that's the hard part of my job is, is, is not being able to give everybody, is not to be able to support, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because right. it's just, we have so much incredible talent. And so I, yeah, I, I, I'm really blown away you know, by the talent that, that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, a, a hard job, but an enviable one, because at the end of the day, you do get to work with and support uh, such great creative talent. So 
uh, that's a great note on which to leave it. Um, Justine, thank you so much for, for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> Come see me, talk to me. <laughs> okay, and to all of you watching, thanks for, for tuning in. And uh, we will hopefully see you at more of this year's uh, virtual Planet in Focus Industry Conference. So thanks again. <laughs>